Welcome back to Local Break, where we break away from breaking news to bring you the latest and biggest entertainment and lifestyle news from Zansi. So let's get right into it. A huge and big and large congratulations to Shoma Josie, who won a Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Award. The rapper and singer scooped favorite African star at the 33rd annual awards. Nominated with our fellow South African Queen Shekinah, Kenyan singer Patricia Kihuru, and Nigerian entertainer Tenny, our girl Sho came out on top. The announcement was made on Tuesday after two days of uncertainty on who won in the category after the American winners were announced on Saturday night. This is her second international award as last year she bagged a BET award for Best International Act. The awards will premiere on Friday, which is today, May 8 at 10 past 4 in the afternoon Central African time on Nicktoons DSTV channel 308. Again, congratulations, we are so proud. It seems like the South African entertainment and film industry has been rocked with so much drama lately and at the center of a lot of it is Ferguson Films. The production company owned by the power couple Shona and Connie Ferguson has come under fire once again for firing multiple actors from their popular Mzansi magic telenovela The Queen. The recent backlash comes after the departure of actress Dineo Moikesi slash Langa from the soapy. The departures of actors such as Rami Shuene and rumors of more actors said to be fired has brought the couple under a lot of scrutiny. Now let's take it back just a little bit. Their woe started late last year when veteran actress Fatis Bandara wrote an open letter to the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Natin Tetwa, in which she accused the Fergusons of exploiting many actors, including herself. The duo has been known to ignore accusations, however this time they set the record straight during an Instagram live video with fellow actor Tim Bandaba. They got asked the question, why do you keep firing people? Take a look. We keep firing people. Who's <laughs> fired? Oh. Anyway, yeah, answer. You want to answer? Yeah, guys, this is a soap. It's a telenovela, okay? Yeah. Characters come and go. And go. That's how soap operates. Um, it's for story, sometimes to introduce another story, but characters come and go. This is not something that is, that is exclusive to the Queen or exclusive to Rosemary no. or exclusive to Isibaya. It happens everywhere, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. I hope you answer. Mm. That, you know, I think that's what people don't know. That the, the reality yeah. of what we do is you are going to see new people in and out. In and it's the nature of storytelling. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, people forget because they, when they watch a show, they get to a point where one year later they go, I man, what we're tired of these people. What else can you give us? <laughs> now, if I'm going to give you something different and something new, somebody has to go. Yes, uh, hopefully it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Except Mr. Gaz. Moving swiftly along, but staying in the film industry, last week the South African Film and Television Awards honored Mzansi's finest screen acts. Now, we're not gonna get into the drama that was. But we do have some insight on what it takes to produce a SAFTA winning documentary. We spoke to director Catherine Mayberg of South African documentary Dying for Gold, which was nominated for five SAFTAs. And they bagged a win for best sound in a documentary. So just to give you some background, Dying for Gold is free to watch and I don't want to give too much away, but this documentary tells the story of half a million minors in South Africa who have been affected by TB and silicosis. This docky is an eye-opener that will tug at your emotions. I think for us firstly, winning an award is, is really important for the film to highlight the issues that are raised in the film. And we hope that um, by exposing the film further to new audiences through the awards and interest in the awards, that the campaign to ensure minors get compensated for injuries and illnesses from the mines will be um, enhanced and people will join the campaign. We've used this opportunity to make the film available for free um, during this time of lockdown. 
a time for contemplation, a time for thinking about the way we live, our privilege, um, the way we consume, our dependence on minerals and what the abuse, ultimate abuse is uh, that on people who work in the mines. Um, we hope that by watching the film during this time of COVID-19, um, people will, will have a new, uh, a new understanding of the world around them and the world that they are, that they are part of and support the, the financial systems um, that are based within gold, um, the, the huge amount of work that comes out of um, sending people underground and then of course the, 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 the massive impact of diseases on people uh, working on the mines. This is, this is really part of our, our attempt to um, start an, a campaign which is called the Justice for Miners campaign, um, which has started working across the region. Um, and this, this is a process which we, we hope we can bring as many people on board. Um, and you can watch the film on our website, which is Dying for Gold, www.dyingforgold.com. Thank you. Now we all know social media can be a tricky place to navigate and this week social media influencer Michaelin Damase was reminded of this after she was criticised by some social media users for her drag inspired makeup. Damase posted this video in a makeup tutorial promoting the latest season of RuPaul's Drag Race UK that recently started airing on BBC Brit. User at Cal Aldine said open quote we have drag artists who are more than capable of representing their own community, culture and artistry. Someone that is not queer and a drag queen cannot introduce drag to anybody. Full stop. Mithlali cannot represent a community she is not part of. Close quote. However, her fans were quick to come to her defense with many saying that if people don't like Michaeli's content, then why follow her? Others praised her for being a focus queen who is always securing the bag. Next, there's really no better time to preach how important it is to have multiple streams of revenue and this next rapper is Steph securing the bag. Super Mega announced details of his app aka TV this week. The rapper took to his Instagram page on Wednesday to announce his app which he calls a channel. Oh, wait are we saying that it's not a channel because it's an app? Anyway the app will be available on Google Play Store and Apple App Store this Friday which is today, as a subscription-based service at 50 Rand per month. The channel will showcase some of the rapper's performances and interviews with some of his celebrity friends including Moosley, MT and Dales, who are also expected to make an appearance on the platform. And if you missed the live, don't worry, we've got you. It's it, Lala. Lala. says, Mega, when are we getting new music? Well, uh, the new music uh, is going to come out, I'd say, a week after next. Um, I don't know how many singles I want to put out, but I know that my first single is a song called Cross My Heart. It's actually written about somebody who's actually here with me at the Union Buildings right now. She is manning the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture uh, desk right now. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Uh, the music should be out week after next. And um, man, I'm really, really so excited about the music. It really, really sounds amazing. Um, it's produced by Tweezy, I think the first two singles. And uh, you guys are gonna love it, man. The first, it's the, the one song is called Cross My Heart. The other song is called Monument. Uh, what's the name of the other songs? It's, it's not coming to me right now, but you're getting the new music very, very soon. In fact, on the Super Mega Show, so if you subscribe on Friday, you're gonna catch the first episode. And then the week after that, I believe I'll be performing the brand new singles on uh, on AKA uh, on the Super Mega Show on AKA TV. If that answers your question, thank you very much. So, if you're a fan of all things AKA, then this app is for you. Now, have you heard the saying 
putting your foot in your mouth. This was definitely the case for radio personality Gareth Cliff. Gareth received much backlash after he wrote an open letter to the president. The president. He. The. He. Pre, the president. He wrote. He wrote an open letter to the president. You. Let's rewind that. Gareth Krillov wrote an. Wine. Gareth Cliff received much backlash after he wrote an open letter to the president on the lockdown claiming that the open quote patience and emotional state of affairs are on a knife edge close quote he went further to say that the president should lift the lockdown because the economy and the people of the country were not coping and that the novel virus was the least of our worries. Dying was the least of our worries. Who is we? Because what? Yo. Many felt as though Gareth was being reckless and speaking from a place of privilege, which he was. As a result, the outcry birthed hashtag Gareth Cliff must fall, hashtag you must fall, you must fall, hashtag Gareth Cliff must fall. Twitter user at Nakimupedi said, open quote, hashtag Gareth Cliff must fall. Another one speaking from a point of privilege with lots of entitlement, full stop. Useless thing who thinks he is all what is best from Zanzi. Close quote. Another user, at Siko underscore Lina, said, open quote, since when is Mr. Cliff speaking for the poor South Africans? And how is a cigarette ban going to help poor South Africans? Close quote. Cliff responded to the backlash on his Cliff Central show this week by saying that he was merely speaking for himself in an open letter to the president. To, uh, okay. He also added that he was not trying to be disrespectful to the president and that those who thought he was speaking for white people are making it all about him and not the issues he raised. Full stop. But he was speaking for himself. Anyway, take a listen to the clip. Now, I, I wrote a, I think it was a polite letter to the president. I mean, you guys could be the judge of that because you've heard it and you've read it. Um, there was a voice clip and there was a letter. Now, if you hate, if you hate me, that's fine. Uh, then, because I've, I've got advice for people who are stupid and, and, and let their personal animus for someone get in the way, then just take me out of it. So read the letter. If you, if you don't like listening to me and you don't like the sound of my voice, then just read the letter and tell me if you have a problem with the content. Because I wasn't disrespectful to the president or to Minister Tlamini Zuma, right? I just said what I think a lot of people are feeling and uh, various uh, political people on... on Instagram and Twitter and wherever else said, oh, you know, this guy, he's addressing, he's talking about, he's talking on behalf of these people. Or he's talk I'm not. I'm really speaking for me. And if anyone wants to join me, you join me by voluntary association. I'm not trying to co-opt a movement here. That's why I'm not in politics, right? So take it from me. I have nothing personally to gain from this. I'm fine. I can stay in lockdown forever. I run my own business. Most of what we do is online. I don't need government handouts, and I'm not looking for your votes to go to Parliament. Right? All that we are saying is, sorry, Mr. President, that these are the fellow South Africans you have to deal with. Anyway, that's a wrap. That was like an... Yeah, so just join us next week for more of Mzansi's latest and biggest entertainment and lifestyle news only on break. Bye!